So here's our last example on substitution. Integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine x times cos x. We've done the indefinite integral already. So, I mean, having done the integral already, we could, we could just do this, right? We could say, okay, we did this, and the answer was, oh, uh, the antiderivative, right, the indefinite integral was half sine squared x plus c, if you like. But when we're doing the indefinite integral, we don't worry about the plus c. We evaluate from 0 to pi over 2. So it's, it's a half times 1 squared minus a half times 0 squared. Answer is a half. We're done. So you might wonder why I'm still talking. Well, I want to show you how to do it the other way. Like we discussed, there was that video at the beginning where I said, you know, we can kind of think about the geometry that's going on here. What's actually going on when you do a substitution for a definite integral, right? That when we let u equal to sine x, we think of this as transformation going from sort of the x space over to the u space. We're doing this change of variables. And when we do that, right, when we write u as a function of x, right, and we think about sort of a partition for this, right, um, each interval in that partition gets stretched by a little bit. And they get stretched by, well, whatever function you're using to do the substitution. So when we do u is equal to, to sine x, right, we do du, and we get cos x times dx, right? We think of, we think of the, the dx or the du as sort of the, the infinitesimal width of those rectangles whose areas we're adding up. Um, Okay, so we have that stretch factor by cos, right? So we said, well, you know, over here what you're doing is you're just doing kind of the dx, right? You have this smaller width or bigger width, I guess, depending on, on the point of view. Um, but then you're, you're changing the height by this factor of cos x to, to make up for that, right? Um, but then what we can do is over, over on the du side, right? Instead of stretching the height, we stretch the width, right? Du, it's built in. Cos x dx is the same thing as du. Right? And then we just have, um, well, sine x just becomes u, right? So we have that. Now, what you don't want to do is put an equal sign here and put the same limits of integration that you had before, right? Because if we're transforming from the x variable to the u variables, we have to change everything, right? And now we say, okay, if x is equal to 0, u is sine of x. So u, when x is equal to 0, is u will be sine of 0, right? Which is 0. And then it'll be sine of pi over 2, which happens to be 1, right? So that's 1. That's 0. So what we have is 1 half u squared, right? From 0 to 1. And like before, we had 1 half, okay? So ultimately, if your goal is to just evaluate this definite integral, get the answer, um, you can choose which way you want to do it. You can either do the indefinite integral, do the u sub, do the indefinite integral, substitute back, get everything in terms of x, and plug in the original limits. That's fine. Or when you do that u sub, bring the limits along for the ride, but remember that they change, right? you have to plug the x values in. These are x values. You plug them into the function to get the corresponding u values. So instead of going from 0 to pi over 2, we go from 0 to 1. Okay? Either way is fine. There, there's this sort of intermediate half measure that people kind of fall into where, where we do the u sub here and we keep the limits, but we keep the original limits. That wouldn't be correct. It would not be correct to put pi over 2 here. right? The answer is not pi squared over 8. The answer is a half. Okay? So you have to remember that if you want to kind of keep the limits in the intermediate steps, they have to be the right limits. You can't use the x limits for a u integral. Right? If you're going to switch in terms of u and you want to keep it as a definite integral, you have to figure out what are the u values corresponding to the x values you started with. Okay? Um, so it's one way or the other. Either do the indefinite integral first, then put in the original values, the original limits, or remember to change the limits when you change everything else.